now invite Ms. Susan Shorty of the Defense Forum Foundation to take a seat at the petitioner's table to be followed by Mr. Nakaki Leguros, sorry, to be followed by Mr. Sidney Solomon Assaw and Mr. Nakaki Laguros. You now have the floor, Madam. Thank you, Your Excellency and the Fourth Committee. Today, Western Sahara remains the only African nation that has failed to achieve decolonization because it was, because it was invaded by Morocco in 1975. For 16 years, the Sahrawi, Sahrawi fought the Moroccan invaders, and at the very point when it appeared the Sahrawi would win their freedom and Western Sahara would finally be free, the King of Morocco brought you in, the United Nations, and sued for a ceasefire. In good faith, the Sahrawi laid down their arms and agreed to a ceasefire when you, the United Nations, promised them the only thing they ever asked for the right to vote on self-determination. And what has this meant? Former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon summed it up best when he described Western Sahara as one of the forgotten humanitarian tragedies of our time and an occupation by Morocco that is unacceptable. It is unacceptable that the long promised vote has never occurred because the Kingdom of Morocco has poured millions of dollars into lobbying to block the successful implementation of the referendum, bribing UN officials and lawmakers as detailed by numerous leaked reports, including one prepared by the UN's own Department of Peacekeeping Operations. The repeated failure by the UN not to fulfill its promise of a referendum because of bribery and, co and corruption has led to many tragic events. Sahrawi and Moroccan occupied Western Sahara face torture imprisonment and disappearances while those living in the refugee camps since 1975 for 43 years have waited for 27 years for the UN promised referendum. An entire generation of children has never seen their homeland. Additionally, the Sahrawi have also seen their natural resources plundered by the aggressor. The UN is sending a terrible message when it rewards the Kingdom of Morocco for invasion, aggression, and violence while punishing the Sahrawis who place their trust in you. For the Sahrawi, trust in the UN has forced them to see their children grow up in refugee camps and their loved ones being beaten, tortured, and disappeared into Morocco's prisons. And it is not just the Sahrawi people who have suffered. The people of Morocco have also suffered, as so many resources that could have been invested to help raise the standard of living in Morocco and create more opportunities for the citizens of that country have been diverted to the illegal occupation of Western Sahara. Resolving this conflict would have significant benefits. It would result in the establishment of a Muslim African democracy in Western Sahara that upholds the freedoms and rights enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It would bring about much needed stability in the Maghreb and signal to the Muslim and African world the UN's commitment to peaceful advocacy and the rule of law. If the UN does not hold a free, fair, and transparent referendum, then it must call upon the Kingdom of Morocco to end Morocco's illegal occupation of Western Sahara and end this tragic and unacceptable situation. It is time for the Kingdom of Morocco to invest in the Moroccan people and stop using Moroccan's resources to persecute the people of Western Sahara and illegally occupy their homeland. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank Ms. Shati for the information she has furnished to the committee. You may now withdraw. <laughs>